So, <laughs> Roxy was sleeping through my last reading. Can you believe that? Um, you know, usually we think animal stories are just happy stories. Um, but we just read Charlotte's Web, and boy, that was a deep book. There were a lot of complex themes in Charlotte's Web. What do you think about the one and only Ivan? Is that a happy book? A funny, happy animal book? Hmm. We'll talk about that. We'll see. Right now, Roxy doesn't look very happy, so maybe maybe it's not. What do you think? She's going to go back to sleep. Just don't let any of you do that when I'm reading, okay? <laughs> so here's reading three. This subtitle is called Shapes in Clouds. I think I've always been an artist. Even as a baby, still clinging to my mother, I had an artist's eye. I saw shapes in the clouds and sculptured in the tumbled stones at the bottom of a stream. I grabbed at colors, the crimson flower just out of reach, the ebony bird streaking past. I don't remember much about my early life, but I do remember this. Whenever I got the chance, I would dip my fingers in cool mud and use my mother's back as a canvas. She was a patient soul, my mother. Next subtitle is called Imagination. Someday, I hope I can draw the way Julia draws, imagining worlds that don't yet exist. I know what most humans think. They think gorillas don't have imaginations. They think we just don't remember our pasts or ponder our futures. Come to think of it, I suppose they have a point. Mostly I think about what is, not what could be. I've learned not to get my hopes up. Next subtitle is called The Loneliest Gorilla in the World. When the Big Top Mall was first built, it smelled of new paint and fresh hay, and humans came to visit from morning till night. They drifted past my domain like logs on a lazy river. Lately, a day might go by without a single visitor. Max says he's worried. He says, I'm not cute anymore. He says, Ivan, you've lost your magic, old guy. You used to be a hit. It's true that some of my visitors don't linger the way they used to. They stare through the glass, they click their tongues, and they frown when I watch my TV. He looks lonely, they say. Not long ago, a little boy stood before my glass, tears streaming down his smooth red cheeks. He's the loneliest gorilla in the world, he said. Hmm. Clutching his mother's hand. At times like this, I wish humans could understand me the way I can understand them. It's not so bad, I wanted to tell the little boy. With enough time, you get used to almost anything. Next subtitle is called TV. My visitors are often surprised when they see the TV Mac put in my domain. They seem to find it odd, the sight of a gorilla staring at tiny humans in a box. Sometimes I wonder though, isn't the way they stare at me sitting in my tiny box just as strange? My TV is old, it doesn't always work, and some days will go before anyone remembers to turn it on. I'll watch anything, but I'm particularly fond of cartoons with their bright jungle colors. I especially enjoy it when someone would slip on a banana peel. Bob, my dog friend, loves TV almost as much as I do. He prefers to watch professional bowling and, eat, and cat food commercials. Bob and I have seen many romance movies, too. In a romance, there's much hugging and sometimes face licking. I have yet to see a single romance starring a gorilla. We also enjoy Western movies. In a Western, somebody always says, the town ain't big enough for the both of us, Sheriff. 
And in a Western, you can tell who the good guys are and who the bad guys are, and the good guys always win. Bob says Westerns are nothing like real life. Hmm. The Nature Show is the next subtitle. I've been in my domain for 9,845 days, alone. For a while, when I was young and foolish, I thought I was the last girl on earth. I tried not to dwell on it. Still, it's hard to stay upbeat when you think there are no more of you. Then, one night, after I watched a movie about men in black hats with guns and feeble-minded horses, different show came on. It was not a cartoon, not a romance, not a western. I saw a lush forest. I heard birds murmuring. The grass moved. The trees rustled. And then I saw him. He was a bit threadbare and scrawny and not as good looking as I am, to be honest. But sure enough, it was a gorilla. As suddenly as he'd appeared, the gorilla vanished, and in his place was a scruffy white animal called, I learned, a polar bear, and then a chubby water creature called a manatee, and then another animal and another. And all night, though, I sat wondering about the gorilla I'd glimpsed. Where did he live? Would he ever come to visit? If there was a he somewhere, would there also be a she as well? Or was it just two of us in all the world trapped in our own separate boxes? The next sub subtitle is called Stella. Stella says she is sure I will see another real live gorilla someday. And I believe her because she's even older than I am. And her eyes and, and has eyes like black stars and knows more than I will ever know. Stella is a mountain. Next to her, I'm a rock, and Bob is a grain of sand. Every night when the stores close and the moon washes the world with milky light, Stella and I just talk. We don't have much in common, but we have enough. We are huge and alone, and we both love yogurt raisins. Sometimes Stella tells stories of her childhood, of leafy canopies hidden by mist and the busy songs of flowing waters. Unlike me, she recalls every detail of her past. Stella loves the moon with its untroubled smile. I love the feel of the sun on my belly. She says, it's quite a belly, my friend. And I say, thank you, and so is yours. We talk, but not too much. Elephants, like gorillas, do not waste words. Stella used to perform in a large and famous circus, and she still does some of those tricks for our show. And during one stunt, stunt Stella stands on her hind legs while Snickers jumps on her head. It's hard to stand on your hind legs when you weigh more than 40 men. If you are a circus elephant and you stand on your hind legs with a, and while a dog jumps on your head, you are you get a treat. And if you do not, the claw stick comes swinging. Elephants hide as thick as bark on an ancient tree, but a claw stick can pierce it like a leaf. Once Stella saw a trainer hit a bull elephant with a claw stick. A bull elephant is like a silver black, silverback, noble, contained, calm, like a cobra is calm. And when the claw stick caught in the bull's flesh, it tossed the trainer into the air with his, his tusk. The man flew, Stella said, like an ugly bird. And she never saw the bull again. Yikes. That is the end of reading three. Wow. We'll have good things to talk about. A lot of stuff to talk about. See you next time.